Much of the expense and risk in supply chain and operations management comes from preparing for, or suffering from, the uncertainty of future demand. Whilst a good part of that is unknowable randomness, making a good forecast can have a huge impact on seeing upcoming changes and being prepared to meet them. This might come from a surge in demand from a changing fashion, seasonality shifts, the effect of a new trend or changes in a competitor's business model. Forecasting future demand is crucial for supply chain and operations managers and feeds into purchasing, workforce and capacity planning decisions. But often, forecasting can fall between the gaps, as it also involves, or is even led by, others in marketing, sales or corporate HQ. Bad forecasting exposes the whole supply chain to poor performance, either through expensive unnecessary capacity and inventory, or through lost sales and reputation from stockouts and late deliveries. Although those aspects of performance should already be being evaluated, making a forecast and measuring the performance of our forecast is an important extra level that feeds into all of those other ones. So, make a forecast. Seek qualitative and quantitative sources of data from within and outside your own organisation combining multiple sources of information to build the most robust forecast that you can. After the real-world demand data has come in, we want to evaluate our forecast accuracy, comparing it against our earlier predictions. Although it's never very fun and is rarely a flattering activity, it builds perspective and realism about the level of uncertainty that we're working with, which of course can be much higher in some industries than others. Some common statistical measures of quantifying forecast accuracy and forecast error include percentage error, mean absolute error, mean absolute error percentage and mean squared error. Different numbers can paint a very different picture, so check you know what you're working with. Some things can be forecast much better than others. For example, future electricity consumption for a city in a certain month can be forecast relatively well. There is lots of good historical data and the input factors are very well understood. Other things might have a much bigger error margin, like how many brand new technology gizmos will sell in its first launch month. We have to recognise that, in some cases, even the best forecasting effort will have a huge level of uncertainty to it. But we should still do it. Forecasting does not only have to be done internally. Forecasts can be greatly improved by sharing information with our suppliers and our customers, and we can also share the benefits from their better preparation through collaboration and joint forecasting. Forecasting is an incredibly valuable activity that contributes to so many areas of performance, but we also need to review the performance of our forecasting, appreciate its limitations and then review it later against what actually happens to be better prepared for next time.